I was walking in Clementi in Singapore, I discovered two men sitting on a bench having a chat. So I decided to sketch them after I took a photo. I hope you enjoy this. As usual, I always start with a very light sketch uh, with my Palomino Blackwing pencil and uh, I'll show you how I go about doing that. Now, when you sketch uh, a scene like this, don't get distracted with too many things. Uh, the background, the chair, well, go straight in um, where the focus point is and in this case, uh, it will be the two figures. So if you get the proportion of the figures right, uh, the legs, uh, the angles of uh, the feet and um, so on and so forth, well, broad figures, right? Not the nose and the eyes and so on. Uh, the broad shape of the figures and then you add a chair um, and then, you know, roughly add in some background, some lines and, you know, I don't really care too much for details but really it's it's not gonna matter you see later when I paint it it's just going to uh, you know provide some kind of a backdrop but it doesn't really uh, do anything specifically uh, to enhance it because the key of the focus is to focus on the two gentlemen color scheme I'm gonna employ with pretty much purple yellow my favorite um, of course I start with a yellow uh, blue but uh, you know as I drop in some red and so on you become a little bit more purplish but I'm not really uh, being too pedantic about it. It is uh, somewhat of a mix of pure colors on paper. You can see some blue, some red and so on and so forth. And your eyes will see purples, right? As you can see, I'm also using my brand new watch type uh, you know, palette, uh, which I have uh, just I done a review on. If you're interested, uh, the video linked uh, is here. Um, and uh, as you can see, the color is pretty rich and intense and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and it has a very, very nice black as, a t as it turned out. I don't know what color it is because it doesn't come in instruction or specific, uh, you know, note on the color itself. But uh, it's somewhat of black. <laughs> uh, that's a problem when you buy from uh, China. Um, and I actually don't think it is like artist grade colors. But in any case, I'm pretty happy with the intensity and it's probably good for a easy sketch type, uh, you know. Uh, I will actually intend to use the palette when I'm when the colors runs out or I, you know, uh, throw it away and then put in some Daniel Smith color. As you can see, I'm now uh, beginning to put some similar colors uh, in the background, uh, carefully doing negative shapes around the heads of the two figures. Uh, I'm also very careful to dilute down, do some splatter and also soften the edges of uh, the shapes at the back. You really don't want any sort of, uh, you know, uh, attention being focused too much to the background. They are background after all. So what you want to do is really just to soften the edges and, you know, make not uh, strong statements, uh, well, of the background. So basically, put in as many sort of variety of colors as you can, a variety of green, a variety of uh, blue, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, I use some uh, sort of uh, defined shapes for the leaves, uh, but that's about it. So not too much of a, um, you know, uh, attention to the background. Um, and uh, that's really the intent. I put a second layer on the chairs, um, darken the shoes, uh, to give it three-dimensional form, if you like. Uh, the beautiful about uh, the beautiful thing about watercolor is that you can have multiple layer, and the multiple multiple layer allows you to build three-dimensional forms on a two-dimensional piece of watercolor sketchbook or paper. And now I'm ready to sort of uh, build up or worked on the figure itself, um, and I'm gonna put in a bit of a flash tone the flash tone i think it's yellow ochre with a bit of red a bit of uh, lemon yellow sort of you know transparent yellow in it it's a mixture of about three four colors uh, i try to create a bit of a, a variety on the skin tone uh, a bit more warm a bit more cool thrown in to uh, sort of depict the shadow as well as the flesh well where the flashed uh, shows a bit of a uh, uh, blood well there's blood flowing through the, underneath the skin and you know a bit of red 
will sort of show through just remember to throw in a bit of red a bit of blue uh it will sort of work uh as long as it's good you know well nicely mixed if you like uh wet on wet on a piece of uh paper and i continue to splatter and work on the background give it variety give it interest and give it sort of soft softening the edges and softening uh, the background with you know I kind of throw as many colors as I, <laughs> as I can at it uh, you know just create interest right so uh, I think at this point I thought I'm about done uh, paint on one of the mask the second mask um, and uh, a bit more on the watch uh, softening it to red uh, didn't really like that and write my name I, I just take a uh, sort of a look and see how it goes. I didn't really like it at this point and I'm going to work on it a little bit more. So after evaluating it, I felt that the figures are not popping enough. The background's not darker, dark enough. So I decided to darken uh, the background just behind the two figures to make the figures pop. And as you can see, uh, I darken it with a combination of blue, red, uh, brown, and actually doesn't matter I, you know at this point I'm working with values and not so much the color itself and that allows the two figures to pop uh, a little bit better um, and uh, that's just a little trick to remember right any negative shapes allows the front uh, you know figures to pop out and that is just a little trick to remember uh, when your paint sketch is too even and the mid-tone you can actually use a bit of a darker colors to differentiate the shape or separate the shape if you like separate separating the shapes very very important it is a technique for you to make sure that uh, your eyes can now see three-dimensional form uh, in a simple way but basic technique is separating the shape by using darker version uh, of a background to make the front figure pop just remember that when you feel that your painting is a little bit bland a little bit too mid-tone and it requires a bit of a touch-up a bit of an edit that's what you can do right here uh, very easy to remember very easy to do not very difficult uh, just you know throw darker tone at the back uh, but of course the contrast needs to be strong enough like in this case you can see the front and back it's enough contrast to make the figures pop so I think I'm kind of done at this point um, and if you like this sort of tutorial this sort of uh, videos I hope you consider subscribing uh, try to pop up uh, one video a week um, occasionally too but uh, that's all I can do in my busy schedule I hope you enjoyed that thank you very much for uh, tuning in